Hello and welcome to Love Thy Lawyer, where we talk to real lawyers about their lives in and out of the practice of law, how they got to be lawyers, and what their experience has been. I'm Lewis Goodman, the host of the show, and yes, I'm a lawyer. Nobody's perfect. Rising quickly through the ranks at the Riverside Public Defender's Office, she litigated numerous jury trials, court trials, probation violation hearings, and prelims. She now provides a wide variety of legal services through her practice here in Alameda County and through the Alameda County Court Appointed Attorneys Program. She handles cases from misdemeanors to serious felonies in the criminal area. Tamara Zavot, welcome to Love Thy Lawyer. Thank you, Lewis. I'm happy to be here. Where's your office now? Uh, my physical office is in San Ramon. And do you practice in uh, Alameda County as well as in Contra Costa County? Yes. Um, actually, I practice technically in all counties, but primarily in Alameda and Contra Costa. And how long have you been practicing? For about 20 years. Where are you from originally? Well, I was um, raised in Las Vegas, born in Denver, yeah. Colorado. <laughs> Really? That's interesting. What was it like uh, growing up in Las Vegas? It, it was definitely a different kind of lifestyle. Can you be specific? Well, it, when, it was like a little cow town for a while and very much mob run and then corporate. And it's it, and there was a housing boom at that point. And, but I left. That's when I left. I liked it when it was smaller. Did you go to high school in Las Vegas? Yes. What high school was it? It was um, Clark High School. It's funny saying that. <laughs> well, it's Clark County, isn't it? Yes. It was actually the same high school that Jimmy Kimmel went to. Oh, really? Well, how was that experience? <laughs> how did you like going to high school? <laughs> I think my, pretty much like everybody else, I didn't really like it. I, I, I graduated early so I could get out. I wanted to go to college. I wanted to move. <laughs> where'd, you, where'd you go to college? I went to UCLA. I'll tell you an interesting story, though. I was going to go, my, my original uh, trajectory was supposed to be medicine. My dad was a doctor. And so I, you know, I graduated high school when I was 15. And I wrote the, in, in New South Wales, Australia, and all that, some of the British run, some of the old British colony run places like England, uh, Canada, and, and, and Australia, they have these programs where you can go into medical school, you get right accepted from right high school, you do a couple of years of undergrad, then you go right into medical school. So I wrote the, 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 uh, the prime minister of, of New South Wales, I think the college was, I can't remember, the, I think it was just the medical school of New South Wales, if I remember correctly, it was a long time ago, and said, you know, the, I know you, that you're, it's, it's only open to your local regional citizens, but um, you make an exception. I was, an, I'm an exceptional science student. I think I'd be an asset to your um, society and et cetera, et cetera, to your school. And they accepted me. So I was accepted to medical school at that age. <laughs> I was 15, really? old, 16. Yeah. So, so did, could, go ahead. So, so did you make some effort to go there? No, um, there was other things going on in my life at the time. And I ended up just going to UCLA instead <laughs> for your college route. So what did you think of UCLA? Did you enjoy that? Oh, yeah, I loved it. I loved being in L.A. I loved, yeah, I did. I loved UCLA. It was d very different, being in very huge, like my undergraduate classes, there was like 500 students, and I was just like way back in an auditorium. <laughs> and so that was that was pretty crazy. I mean, later on, you get to take the smaller classes. But yeah, I, I love the whole experience. UCLA was was fun. Just picking out my classes, I enjoyed it. I've always liked school, and so I've always liked being a student. So, yeah. did you continue with the science education at UCLA? Or no, I, that's when I switched and went into um, political science. And when you graduated from UCLA, at some oh. point you went to law school. Is that correct? And did you go directly to law school from UCLA? Did you take a little time off? No, I took time off. What did you do? Yeah, I, I took time off because I was, I was joining punk bands at the time. 
And that's really? what I wanted to do. And this is when I had a falling out with my family. Because <laughs> I was pursuing, they wanted me to go to law school at this point. They gave up my their dreams of me being a uh, of a doctor. So they, I went to, so they were... They were they were pursuing. They wanted me to be a lawyer at that at that point. I did have a brother who was a corp who pursued um, law and he became a corporate tax attorney. But so they wanted me to do that. They figured that was another good profession. What was the name of the punk band? Oh, I joined several punk bands back then. I don't I don't really want people looking that up. I don't want to divulge those names because I really don't want people looking that up. How how long did how long did you? spend in the punk rock scene well it wasn't punk rock scene it was all it was more so punk i mean i sort of had my own music it was like a punk funk because i grew up playing the piano you know a russian jewish mom and i would play the piano since i was like two okay <laughs> they thought i was a prodigy you guys very tiny i used to play and people thought i was a prodigy i learned how to play every instrument so it was it was it was it wasn't just straight up punk it was there was a funk to it we called it punk funk and so that's what we used to do. How long did I do that for? I think five. Wait, uh, I didn't go right into law school. I think it was about five years, maybe. And were you so, able to support yourself playing punk music? I don't remember. No, I don't think we, did, we didn't make money doing that. We used to live in our studios, on the studio floors. <laughs> so I went from a, a doctor's family where, you know, I didn't have to worry about money to just living on studio floors. But, you know, it was cool. It was like, oh, we're pursuing our art. I don't know what we did. We did. I know we had to take odd jobs and stuff. I don't remember exactly what we would do. But, so um, when, when did you decide to to go to law school? I never really decided that. It was sort of decided for me. This, the dude I was with was like, that was in the band, was like, why don't you go to law school? Like he saw that we can make money and buy instruments and buy stuff, right? <laughs> buy things. It's like, I'm like, Okay, you know, I might as well. I mean, everybody that I was around would always say that I cross examined them. I didn't I didn't know I was doing that, but that's what they say when I meet them. That I'd start asking them a million questions and I was cross examining them. And everybody was sort of encouraging me to be a lawyer. And so so I said, Okay, I'll do it. I mean my attitude was it's a really good education. You know, that's what my dad always say, it's a good education, you can't go wrong. And and it is. It's a great education. It teaches you how to think. And I thought I'll just get a law related uh, job. I don't necessarily have to be a lawyer, you know, at that point. So I still wasn't really um, thinking I'm going to be a lawyer. So you were getting encouragement from both your punk rock friends and from your family to go to law school. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I, I <laughs> my family at this point had like really uh, almost disowned me because you know I wasn't pursuing what they wanted me to. You went to Michigan. How did you decide to go there? Yes, it cool. is. I, yeah. and I'm glad I chose it. It was it was a different different than anything. It was a different college experience, first of all, than you know than I've ever been to. It was it was like uh, I don't know. I didn't. I wasn't that into the whole thing at UCLA, but I don't know. Michigan is is was very interesting. I liked it. Specific about that? Okay. Well, I mean, first I didn't even really know about it because I didn't know about law school. I did not grow up in a law a law environment. You know, it was medical, and I really did, had no clue about what was going on. And I just I heard scuttlebutt going around Michigan. You can go to Michigan. Like it just sounded oh, wow, and it just sounded really interesting to me. And I started looking it up. I said, wow, this school is like very well regarded and like they had a good band their bands like a really good band and, yeah. and a lot of athletes train there they've got good sports teams and right. i was like i was like this is like a real college college type thing like you see in those old movies and stuff <laughs> so i said that's where i'm gonna go and i wanted something different i've been on the west coast my whole life you know I bet it was a little colder there than it was in las vegas or ucla it was but i adapted pretty quickly to the cold it was it was weird kind of snow because you know even in, in in las vegas it did snow once in a while the snow was pretty decent because it was over there by that reno snow which is really good and their snow was like ice and then you know we we, we get a car and you just start sliding you know Woo! and you just hope that you don't hit anything and i never i wasn't used to that ice business and, and scraping your windows and all that that was wild for me well aside from the I see driving experiences. What did you think of law school? I really liked it. It was why. 
I like the form of the Socratic method where you're talking and you could just arg- start arguing. <laughs> and you can, um, and, and you had to read the cases. I felt like you, you had to, it was kind of my thing because you've got to be a good student. I, I think to be in law, uh, in law school, it's because you got to read stuff. Like I think medical school would have been easy because it's like memory, and I, I can memorize stuff. That's not a problem. <laughs> it's like with law school, it's like you had to analyze. You know, you had to you had, like. I remember someone saying, "Can I bring a book? This book?" He goes, "You can bring whatever you want. It's not going to help you. You know, you're going to have to look at the facts and analyze it, and the book's not going to help you." So go, go ahead, bring whatever you want. So I liked that aspect and you had to read the case. Well, there was people that sat in back and read newspapers the entire time. <laughs> and there were some really, really, I'd never been around brilliant students like that. I mean, where I just, I mean, I used to be like the top of my class, even at UCLA. And it was like easy for me. When I got to Michigan, it was like hard. And it was like, it was it was hard work, and there was very very brilliant people in my class that would get up and they would start talking like, oh my god, you know. So I was just blown away by some of the people in in there that how brilliant they were. I thought that in law school that there were some really brilliant people there. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I thought that it, that there were really smart people around, much smarter than. I had really ever been around before, all in grouped in one place. So, so what was your fa- your first legal job? Really, the public defenders. Well, how, how did you end up going to Riverside Public Defender? I applied. <laughs> it was like, I mean, why, why there as opposed to? Because I mean, I just else? applied everywhere. I said I just going to apply, you know, and and I went on a lot of interviews. I, I had to travel. Where was I living at that time? I think it was San Diego area. I think. And I, and I I had to take like a bus over. I didn't have any money and I had to take a bus to, to Riverside for my interview. (laughs) I remember that. And, and I didn't even really have a whole clue about what they did. I told you, I'm still not seasoned in any what law is. I think I watched some law stuff on television, but you know, it was just the stories that compelled me. I wasn't even still really, I mean, some of the, you know, you watch them do trials, it's exciting, you know, and you watch them do live court stuff, that's exciting to watch, watch them cross-examining and talking to juries. So, you know, it's not like I didn't see that stuff, but I just wasn't, I don't think I was imagining myself ever doing that at that point. I, I didn't have a whole clue exactly what they did. I figured it out. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I figured it out pretty quickly and it was like, wow, and I just like loved it. I was like, you know, when you first start, you're not getting paid that much money, but it was like so cool to me. Was, I was like, you know, I, I was full of kind of anger and rage at this point. <laughs> Punk music does that to you. And and it was like, you know, I channeled it. It was like, this is so cool. I was going to trial like and doing motion straight up. Um, like I did my first motion, it was it was a DUI suppression motion for one of those DUI stops where they stop you at a DUI checkpoint, you know. And I was like, I remember they were so we were doing the calendar, and the, you know the, the new deputies, and they go, oh, Tamara has a motion, and they started moving all the tables away, and like I was just sitting there, I was like, oh my god. And it was like, at that moment, it hit me. And my, my, I could see my heart beating. Through. I was like, I don't even know if I could. I had never done this. I would not even done mock mock trial. I would never done any cross exam. I, I went home. Nobody really helped me. I went home. I said, I guess I got to ask this guy questions. And I just figured out what questions could, could get the most, the best answers, right, that I needed to get. And I just sort of figured it out. I never had any training in this. I didn't even have criminal procedures. So I was just like trying to figure it out. I get there and my heart's beating out of my chest. I said, I don't even know if I can do this. I didn't ask anybody. I don't know what I'm doing. I said, okay, just calm down. Either you can do it or you don't. If you totally screw up, the guy can appeal. I'm sure he'll be fine. And you just find something else to do, right? I said, no one's going to remember you. So so I calmed down. I, I I won the motion. I just started asking questions. I just I just fell into it, and it was like, yeah, okay, this is pretty natural. And I started going to trial. They were telling me, this is what the uh, deputies would say: bring your toothbrush tomorrow. Bring your toothbrush tomorrow. I was like, what? I didn't understand what that meant because I was like challenging the judges, and they thought I was going to get taken in. That's what that meant. So finally, I understood what that meant. But I was like full of fight. And it was like I was digging going to trial. I just go to trial, you know. They would handle your stuff downstairs. 
continue your matters. I could go to trial all I wanted. It was just great. At some point, you ended up coming up to the Bay Area. How did how did you make that decision? Quite honestly, I like cooler weather. I was moving a lot. I tended to, um, I don't know if it's because of how, I, like, what, what would happen when I was going to college and I was sort of went from, you know, having a lot of abundance then going to nothing. And I and then, you know, I started working at the public defender's office. I became a three pretty quickly. I started making some money. And, I, and then like, so I started making some money. And it was like, I don't know if I'm addicted to the struggle or what, but I tended to just sort of give everything away and move. I sort of like to start doing coming up again. And I did that a lot. And, when, and then I wanted to go. I, I went to the Bay Area. I goes, why am I not living here? It's so nice out here. I said, I got to live here. So I got up and I moved <laughs> to the Bay Area. And I was doing appeals at that time. And uh, and funny enough, what, one of my colleagues from the Riverside Public Defender's Office was also up here doing appeals. <laughs> we just happened to meet at one of their little seminars. And uh, and that was, that was a really a nice uh, reunion. And um, so, yeah, so I came up here. And then I uh, started, then I applied to panels. I wanted to get back into trial work. So that's when you got on the Alameda County uh, Court Appointed? Yeah. What do you really like about practicing law? What do I really like? I like I like beating the DAs. I like beating the government. It gives me a really good satisfaction. When they read a verdict, they say, not guilty. It's just like the best high in the whole world. <laughs> it just feels so, so good. It's like worth all, whatever you had to go through to get to that point, it's worth it. If, if, uh, Young person with an interest in punk rock and other things, you know. I mean, no, seriously. No, I mean, so if someone were, you know, coming out of college and thinking about a career, do you th you think you'd recommend going into law? Well, yeah. I mean, because people will ask me, say, I might want to go to law school. I say, you should. It's, it's, you know, you'll never regret the education. You're not going, damn, I wish I just got that great education. What am I going to do with it? You, you always have that. You always have a great education. It's great fallback degree you know it's great like you might pursue something else i said you know what i'm gonna go ahead and pick that degree up again how is actually practicing law either met or different from your expectations about it well like i said i didn't have any expectations because i didn't i didn't really think i was going to practice law but i guess when i started uh, my whole training has been in court appointed i did it court appointed you know from the beginning and i've always been on panels either it was court appointed for appeals, court appointed now. And so, you know, now I'm starting to get into private. So that's, that's the expectation. I'm a little bit uh, leery on, but so like the court appointed stuff and the public defender stuff, that was comfortable. I was comfortable with that. I had no expectations of that. And that was comfortable with that. Now I'm transitioning from some court appointed to private and that's more difficult. I'm seeing how that's working and it's a little more difficult. Why? Why is it more difficult? <laughs> you have to do, it's hard. It's hard to be a lawyer. You have a lot of work to do. You really work for your money. And then now that you have to like hustle work, you have to get work. You have to be a, a diplomat and you have to have goodwill and you have to be able to advertise yourself however you do it. And it's just, to me, that's, that's harder. Can you think of a case that went really well for you where you feel like, <laughs> wow, I really did a good job for a client? Yes. Well, I like to think I do a good job for all my cases. And I have handled many, many thousands of cases. I was at the Riverside Public Defender's Office when they stopped, de stopped declaring conflicts. And I was on a calendar the entire time. Yeah, I set a lot of trials, <laughs> believe me. <laughs> but yeah, okay. So I do remember it was this misdemeanor trial. And it was the guy was going to, it would have serious consequences. The guy was going to have to register as the 290 register. He was going to get deported. Um, it was like uh, the child molest statute. And, and yeah, it was like maybe my sixth trial. And the, the, my supervisor brought the new misdemeanor deputies in to watch me. <laughs> so I was very, very honored and flattered by that. And the, di the guy cried. He needed an interpreter. And the guy cried. And so it was like, that was like a big moment for me. And then also... The judge, bless his heart, I love this judge, because he was fair. And, and and the DA, there was a char another charge, like a stupid um, uh, license charge, some other little charge, okay? Your car wasn't parked right, or it might not have been the auto, but it was there some other little charge. 
that that I I guess I had offered early on. I said, let him plead to this. It doesn't have all the serious immigration consequences and other consequences. And the guy said, no, we did it in front of the judge. And then, so at this point, so we, I just bifurcated or, you know, so that charge came up because, so the DA was pissed that I just won. He goes, what about this other charge, Your Honor? We still have that to contend with. And the, and the judge goes, no, I was there when she offered to settle it. And you said, no. So I'm dismissing that, dismissed in the interest of justice. And that was one of the, probably the greatest win for me at that moment because, because this guy couldn't beat me. This DA couldn't beat me. He didn't know what I was doing. He said, what are you doing? What's your defense? And like, he was like, just wanted to beat me. And at that moment, I was very, very happy. So that was a good trial. Do you think the system's fair? Well, I can tell you that I can only comment on the criminal justice system from what I've seen and how I've been in courtrooms and personal, my own personal involvement in the criminal justice system. It's not fair to anybody. It is fair. I think the idea that it's possibly fair, it's just not fair. I mean, that you know, to the, 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 the people that call themselves the victims, I don't see how they're um, any better off. They're, you know, they're, they're just mired in all this anger and, and, and retribution because that's what the system is going to do to you. You're going to go to court every day and be angry. And, you know, then, then of, of course, the defendants, you know, I see how unfair it is to the defendants. We can get into that more deeper. But so it's not fair to anybody. And then they put the person into prison for r- ridiculous amounts of time that they shouldn't even be in prison at all. And it's just the whole system just doesn't seem the right way to deal with other humans. Have you any, had any mentors along the way, people who've kind of helped you out, given you some ideas? Well, you know, like I said, I've been lucky enough to shadow a lot of attorneys that are seasoned. Like there's people like you, I can watch you in court. I've always watched how other people handle their matters in court. I've, I've gone to, I've always sat, you know, once again, educating myself. Like when I was at the public defender's office, I, I you know, like my first trial, I said, I got to do good. So I would go and watch other Oh my God, the best education is reading other other attorneys' transcripts. So reading the transcripts at the public defender's office, I spent a lot of time. I would get up at two in the morning, go to the gym, go to the public defender's office, start reading books, transcripts. I would sit after hours. I used to go visit my clients and I would sit after hours and watch trials. Well, you've, you've mentioned going to the gym. What What other sorts of recreational things do you enjoy doing? I like doing anything outdoors, outdoor sports. I like doing, like at the gym, I like to lift weights. And at outdoors, that's where I would get my cardio. Like I love to cycle. I love to, <clears throat> I don't really like to jog unless I'm going uphill. I like, I like that kind of stuff. And I like music. I'm very, you know, of course I told you I was a <clears throat> piano player and I was in a lot of different bands, you know, both formalized in school as well as later on so i like i love music i love to listen to music what sort of music do you listen to these days same music i've always listened to i've I've always been into jazz i love jazz okay it's to me the amalgamation of everybody and everything is american made i love old jazz i love new jazz i said there was a funk to my um, punk i love a punk i love I love country. I love heavy metal. I love soul. I love hip hop. I, I love just about everything. I love classical. You say you have you have children. Yeah, I got two two boys. Really? How old are they? Oh, they're in their twenties, early twenties. Oh, <laughs> wow. When you were raising your your children, how did that work into your practice of law? It was a little bit difficult to try to, that's why it's good. I, 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 you know, I have a public defender experience that, cause you know, they sort of did the business part. I just had to do my law, but you know, I was also learning all the time. So I, I, I would go there, spend a lot of my hours there. So I didn't get to spend a lot of time with them. So that was hard, but you know what, Th- when I was doing appeals work, that was better. Cause I could be home with my kids. What kind of things keep you up at night? I also forgot to tell you about something about what my parents thought I was going to do, but I'll tell you about that later. Uh, what keeps me up at night? I I just I can't sleep. I have insomnia. I have a weird energy going through me that that I can't shut down. Let's say you came into some real money. You know, you uh-huh. fell into a couple of billion dollars. What what if anything would you do different in your life? Nothing really. I mean, I've had money, and you know, I've made money. I bought houses, and I made money. And I don't have a weird relationship with money. I don't like to have it. 
or something. I, I just start spending it and I just don't really, I like this, like I said, I like the struggle. I like to, the idea of trying to make money better. I like that feeling better. I wouldn't do anything. I think I just, I don't know, give it to my kids. Yeah, give it to my kids. I think that's the only thing I would do different. Give it to my kids. Let's say you had a magic wand. You could change one thing in the world, in the legal world or otherwise. What what would that be? Love. <laughs> just love. Tamara Zavot, it has been a pleasure talking to you. I appreciate your interesting stories about your life and your practice of law. Good talking to you, and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you, Lewis. Back at you. That's it for today's episode of Love Thy Lawyer. Many thanks to my guests who have contributed their time and wisdom and make this show possible. Thanks, as always, to Joel Katz for music, Brian Matheson for technical support, and Tracy Harvey. I'm Lewis Goodman. And so it's a, it's a, it's a definitely a, a new education for me.